Welcome to the Kix 92.1 FM transmitter site. We're going to do a little transmitter repair today. We're replacing a blower in a uh, 11 or 12 year old transmitter. There's the required signs at the transmitter site, including the uh, tower registration uh, number uh, issued by the federal government in the U.S. All the usual signs about uh, no admittance and warning and high voltage and RF radiation. On the left there is an Armstrong transmitter, uh, actually built by RVR in Italy. Uh, we've modified it some. We've installed a different exciter. In fact, it's that Nautel right there, a 300 watt exciter. There's our STL receiver, 950 megahertz uh, receiver, receiving the composite or the base band. There's the Nautel uh, exciter. There's our remote control, which is made by Sign Systems, and this is uh, the exciter for the backup transmitter. We have a backup transmitter, also uh, Armstrong uh, relabeled from RVR, and there's a kilowatt, 1,000 watt amplifier um, putting out right about a kilowatt there. Is that right? Yeah, yeah right about a kilowatt of uh, backup power. Our normal transmission uh, output power is 3.3 uh, kilowatts. Now, it's very important to make sure that the power is off, so make sure the breaker's off, and it is. You'll notice it's a three-phase breaker. We used to have a three-phase transmitter, but uh, not anymore. We're still using the same breaker, though. I really need to fix that so it's, um, you know, the right breaker. But uh, anyway, it does cut off. The transmitter itself has a breaker. Uh, there it is, and that is off. Make extra sure. By the way, I'm not wearing a metal watch. I made sure to wear a non-metal watch just to avoid the chance of uh, metal contact and uh, really bad electrocution. Also, take off your wedding ring. Yeah, the wife won't mind if you come home alive and you had your ring off for a little while. And you don't want to get your finger blown off if your ring touches some high voltage. That would be uh, extra bad. So anyway, there you go. Dirty hands, sorry. All right, let's get ready. Here's what I'm in the middle of fixing. I have to take the blower out. There's the old blower, and the bearings went bad on it. And then I've got a new blower to put in. And this time I'm replacing the motor and the squirrel cage both together. In the past, I had replaced just the blower. Uh, excuse me, just the motor itself. And I think the squirrel cage on, on the old squirrel cage was out of balance, so it was uh, kind of a problem. All right, here's the business end of this uh, 3.5 kilowatt uh, FM amplifier transmitter. That's the tube. It's a 3CX 3000A7 uh, tube. That's the tube cavity. I've taken the bottom of the whole assembly out because to take, this, uh, to take the squirrel cage off, you really have to take the whole bottom of, the, of everything out. That's the bottom of the, um, uh, the tube socket. And the curly coils that are leading there, that's taking uh, filament voltage to the, uh, to the tube, kind of high current, low voltage. And then that's uh, those plates there, that's the loading um, uh, arrangement for this tube cavity. There's the motor. It's a motorized loading arrangement, so you can move those paddles back and forth with respect to each other to load or unload the tube cavity to send more or less power out to the um, antenna kind of <clears throat> get things matched up there uh, for putting the right amount of power out. The uh, pipe there in the middle of the shot, that's the chimney, uh, and uh, the, there's the high voltage connection. We'll take a better look at that later. That, uh, that chimney takes all the hot air off the tube and blows it up out the top of the transmitter, and then it, it's ducted outside. And that whole plate, uh, there's a sliding plate there with those um, spiraled uh, threaded uh, th rods there. That whole plate can move up and down. Another motor uh, turns four spiral rods all together at the same time in unison and moves that that tuning plate up and down the size of the cavity actually changes depending on your fm frequency here's the high voltage power supply uh that red thing that's the uh input choke on the power supply but then there's two capacitors back there to smooth things out and that is the uh, high voltage transformer takes 220 knocks it up to about six seven thousand volts look at that there's a problem there's a dead mouse Ugh. I got rid of him a little while later in the, in, in the afternoon. There's the high voltage rectifiers. Those turn pulsating DC. I'm sorry, those turn AC into pulsating DC. And then all that is smoothed out by the uh, choke and, and the, and the uh, capacitors. Here's some of the control logic. This is the logic that you know, turns the, the, the relays that apply power or deapply power. And then the big resistors there uh, are the bleed resistors. Here's where the filament voltage goes into the tube cavity. Big, uh, actually, capacitors are made there, bypass capacitors. And uh, that's the filament transformer. So um, 240 volts in and about 7.5 volts out at a very high current to run the filament in the tube. <clears throat> so there we go. Let's continue the tour here. Where are we going now? Oh, yeah, there's the new blower motor. See, I, I, I didn't show you the hard part. I just put the blower motor in. So there's the new blower motor. Got rid of the mouse. He's gone. Yeah, 
Isn't that pretty blower motor? I think they paint those things once they rebuild them. They're painted. And there's the business end of the blower motor where it sucks the air in and blows it up into the cavity. See, I put the bottom plate back on the, the whole tube cavity area. Oh, and I, I uh, kind of dusted all this off, um, some before this shot and some after the shot. Got rid of a lot of the high voltage dust that accumulates. So there's where the air really blows into the bottom of the, uh, of the tube socket. And then it goes uh, past the uh, tube socket through the next plate. And uh, there we go. There's my hand. Um, see, there's not much clearance there, which is why I had to take the whole bottom of the tube assembly out. And there's that chimney. And look at that that wire there that attaches to that plate. That's the high voltage. So that entire plate there is at the high B-plus voltage, about 6,000 volts in this transmitter. And that's why there's so much Teflon around. There's Teflon parts that are insulating those... Um, threaded rods from everything else and then there's a piece of Kapton there that's insulating um, that's the, the high voltage plate and that's where the hot air exhausts so the whole chimney the chimney there that you see that is all at high B plus voltage uh, the way this transmitter cavity is designed there are different designs and and some are like this and some some are different there's the there's the exhaust going outside the building so um, and there's that there's the chimney that is at the high voltage now that whole plate that i keep passing by that whole plate can move up and down so there's the part where the chimney attaches to the top of the tube and boy that tube gets hot the air exiting there is probably 160 to 180 degrees fahrenheit uh tube is throwing off a fair amount of heat and doing its job as uh, amplifying you know it amplifies an input of about 300 watts i'm sorry about 225 watts and jumps that up to about 3,300 watts, so you know, a little more than times 10. Uh, that's more of the sliding plate. You can see that the, the sliding um, plate there can go in different positions, and uh, it, this transmitter has been used on other frequencies, which is why you kind of see what, what looks like high water marks, you know, uh, around the inside of the tube cavity. Uh, those special plates there are where the, the finger stock will touch and carry a lot of current. Okay, here's the front of the transmitter. These are the tuning controls. I said they're motorized earlier. There's the output loading control. That controls those paddles. And there's the plate tuning control. That controls the height of that, that plate that moves up and down, that has the finger stock on it. So when I'm done uh, repairing, uh, I'll be adjusting those controls to tweak it for the best output. All right, I got the back of the transmitter back on, all done. The transmitter is uh, on, at least the filaments are on. I'm waiting for them to warm up for the tube to be ready to go and we'll hit the plate voltage on right there you see the left hand meter shows the plate voltage coming on it comes up in two steps and then the exciter comes on the way this transmitter works is it powers up the exciter after the plates are on it's a simple but effective method and there we go we got power we got almost three kilowatts this is before i went to tuning it and then after i tuned the plate loading and the uh, plate tuning we got about 1.05 amps of current on the on the plate that's the uh, grid current right there about 240 milliamps of uh, grid current and there's the power output 3.35 almost 3.4 kilowatts of power out of this transmitter goes into a multi-bay antenna that gives us um i guess i, I hope i'm right 6,000 watts of output so there's the site things are back on that the backup transmitter is now turned off Remote control works. I checked the calibration of the remote readings, and that's fine. Um, of course, the remote on-off works. And uh, we're about ready to uh, wrap up the site and leave. I made sure that uh, stuff was cleaned up. My trash was thrown away. Um, made sure that bottle of nitrogen there in the back. Made sure that was uh, uh, pressuring the line properly. And uh, I think we're about ready to go. Let's take a look outside. Here's where the coax exits the building and goes on up the tower.